Tai, who was he? Was he more of a hustler or smart? Or I don't think I've changed that much. I think I was somewhat similar to now. Maybe. What was your percentage? <laughs> I was probably. That's a great question. I was probably maybe not organized enough, maybe. But I, you know, I went on a farm young at 19. You work hard on a farm. So I, I don't think I was ever that lazy. Maybe before the farm, I was lazy. Growing up in a city, I think I was probably didn't work hard enough. But once I got on a farm, boy, farm, you were waking up five in the morning, worked at nine at night. So I think it, I went to boot camp on a farm, you could say. So maybe my young tie didn't hustle enough, probably. But young t when, when was your first like actual entrepreneurship experience? 19. Okay, and what was that? And where we? Where I started a grass-fed beef company with Joel Salatin on a farm. Okay. We we rented a farm. We raised. I raised 100 cows, and we sold grass-fed beef. And it made. It remember, it made uh, 60,000 in revenue. I remember the numbers. 12,000 profit for me. That was my cut for the year. Yeah, because he put all the money in. Okay. And I think he made 30. I, he got a little more than me because he put in work and money. But I remember making 12,000. He wrote me a check for 12,000. And I was like, that is a lot of money, dude. I had <laughs> never. You know, it's funny. I found a video when I was at, at, like 16. My grandma was visiting. And in the, it's a video of something else. And in the background, you can hear me talking to my grandma and be like, grandma, I'm broke. Do you have $20 I could borrow? <laughs> it's funny. People sometimes like, Ty, did you inherit money? I'm like, bro, I had, I was begging my grandma for 20 bucks. No way. Yeah, so I was like, grandma, I need my, I need 20. So yeah, when I made 12 grand at 19, dude, I thought I was rich. I was like, I remember having 12,000 in my bank account. I'm like, back then, my mom, I bet you my mom growing up never made more than 12,000 a year. That's crazy. She got married. My stepdad worked at the post office. He delivered mail. And I remember my mom saying, life's going to get better, Ty. John makes $28,000 a year. And we were like, yes. That's crazy. Life's but getting better, that, man. That that experience, that had to have been more than 25 on the hustle scale. You had to have worked hard for that kind of yeah. issue, right? Well, by 19, I got on that farm. Right. And within a year, I was working. Then I was working hard. That's what I mean. When yeah. you think you were hustling like physical 75% work? then. No shit. On a farm was 75. That's why I only made 12 grand. Yeah. <laughs> Other 19 year olds were starting YouTube making a billion, but it's okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not envious. One of the great sayings of Charlie Munger, who died through two or three days ago, rest in peace, great guy or great teacher. He said, there's no great tragedy when other people make more money than you. It's always gonna happen. Cause I see dudes freaking out. They see another dude the same age as them making twice as much money. I'm going, it's always gonna happen. Even Elon Musk, you look at the Forbes list, one day he's the richest, the next day Bernard Arnault's, the next day Mark Zuckerberg passes him. So if you start complete, envy is a dangerous drug and men are super susceptible to financial envy. But that's different from being competitive, right? They're close. <laughs> Are you competitive? A, I'm probably, I don't think I'm as competitive as most entrepreneurs. Like Grant Cardone's a friend of mine. He's so competitive. And, you know, guys like that probably become the richest in the world. I don't think it's interesting to be the richest man in the world. I, I actually think you become the richest man in the world, you probably failed. Do you think back then, like in, our, in the era when you did live here, you were competitive? Never like that. Those guys, Grant Cardone used to Because you were everywhere. You yeah, were but hard. But that was, I, that, I'm adventurous. So I'll, I'll be like that again. But I was never doing it because I saw somebody else making more money. I'm not driven like that, man. Like I said, Grant Cardone used to come over and he was always trying to compete with me. I'm like, bro, you can win that bat. I'm like, uh, uh, sometimes I meet other entrepreneurs. I'm like, I'm not playing the same game as you. Like, I'm playing chess, you're playing Monopoly. So to you, whoever gets the most money wins. To me, chess is like a game you play over and over for fun. To me, business is fun. Yeah. I'm an adventure guy, man. I'm driven by adventure and freedom. Being the richest man in the world, I now know, Forbes list guys, most of them are prisoners to their own wealth. 
Never become so rich you're a prisoner to your own money. You know what an example of that is? Mark Zuckerberg last year, it's a public statement, public filing. They spent $32 million on personal security for Mark Zuckerberg. Jeez. That means people are trying to kidnap his kids. That means people, like, that's insane. Why do you want that? So he's, he's a victim now of his own wealth. So the good news, somebody, listen, I meet people, they're like, Ty, I got to make 100 mil. No, you're wealthy at 10 mil. You get yourself 10 mil, you're going to do anything you want to do in your life. You can pay yourself. A million bucks a year, 80000 a month with no debt. What else do you want to do, man? Like, and if you're crazy into money, 100 mil. But after 100 mil, what are you doing? Do you think, so what do you think is the, is the uh, sweet spot? Like 10 mil? Because I was, uh, I what's think his name? Uh, Top G, um, uh, what's the gentleman's name? Uh, you talking about Andrew Tate? Yeah, Andrew okay. Tate. He said... He's like twenty four under twenty four mil is perfect. He's like you might not own yeah. planes and all that. Yeah. He's like, but you'll live a great life. Anything That's why I said past that, ten mil is fine. It, it look different people are built different. I know people. If they made only ten million, they'd be depressed the rest of their life. Fine, but the, my point is, there's no exact number. Know yourself. For my personality, I'm probably wouldn't be happy at ten million because I'm a little more competitive. But. I don't need, like, I have a friend, he's like, he told me once, I'm only happy if I'm number one or number two in the world. And I feel yeah. like he just boxed himself in. I think it actually caused him a lot of problems in life. I've known him for years. I think it actually called him, caused him a lot of, I think he made a lot of mistakes because of that. I think, I know multiple people like that. It's not even one. I know multiple people that have told me, I'm only happy if I'm number one, number two, number three on the Forbes list. I think that I think it makes you make a lot of mistakes. It'd be like me saying, "I'm only happy if I'm the number one, number two, number three strongest bench press guy in the world." You know what's going to happen? You're going to take big risks. You're going to put too much weight on the bar, and most likely, you're going to tear a muscle permanently. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So by being so damn aggressive you actually get nothing because once you tear a muscle bad enough on bench pressing you'll never bench press again so i've seen people i have multiple friends that their goal is to be so crazy wealthy that they end up destroying themselves so pick your number i think if you li i have a student in india during covid drop shipping covid he was drop shipping on amazon he made three million dollars in one weekend on a black friday he retired in India, three mil. I have a student of mine in Brazil. Before age 20, he made six million in the bank. He has in the bank right now. You, What are you gonna do with that money? He's actually, you know what those two guys have in common? The guy in India and the guy in Brazil, they both deal with depression. Why? Their family's trying to take, has tried to take advantage of them for money. Girls are dating, they don't know if they like them because they're just have money or they genuinely like them. They've lost motivation because they have enough money in their country to never work again. They got no purpose. So remember, money's a double-edged sword. You think it cuts in your direction, but it also, the other side can cut you back. Right. So that's why I say live the balanced life, man. Health, wealth, love, happiness. Always play a different game. Once you get $10 million in net worth, try to, like, then you can play a game. All right, let me try to become, you know, the most in-shape version of my. I, so I think you're always, to keep happy, you should be juggling four things at the same time is your sweet spot 10 right now no i think 10 i mean 10 i i've been in business long enough i think your goals need to be a little bit hard okay. it's not hard for me to do 10 million net worth so i think your goals should be realistic but a little bit hard so you have a challenge so for me 10 million will be too low of a goal because i've been doing business long enough that that's not that hard but if something happened and all I ended up with was 10 million, would I be happy? Sure. Be all right. You can still have a Ferrari. You can still have a badass house. Yeah. You can still travel. You Plus, you still got the ability to keep making money. Lot, yeah. Lots of people. Dude, Donald Trump at one point lost it all. He says, I was $1 billion in debt. He said, I walked past a homeless man and I realized that homeless man had a billion more net worth than me. And then, lo and behold, 10, 15 years later, He's the president of the United States. 
underdogs. Yeah. So that's why I say life needs to be adventure to me. If you don't have adventure, you make all the money in the world with no adventure. Those are the people. The guy who started Victoria's Secret built the biggest lingerie brand, sexiest business ever. When he sold the business, he jumped off a bridge and killed himself. No shit. Yeah. Sad story. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. But I have to believe sometimes when you win the championship, Michael, I think it was Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan said this. When they finally won the championship, they weren't that excited. They were like, is this it? Yeah. So humans need constant dopamine, constant change, you know? Yeah. What would you say, uh, Ty, for myself? Okay, so I've created myself to this point where I've created myself some success and all mm -hmm. that. I'll tell you one thing that I've never done. Mm -hmm. I've never traveled out of, out of the, into any country. I just got my passport for the first time. Yeah. I'm 43 years old. Yeah. I've never been anywhere else. Do you recommend for people to go see the Heck world yeah. in other places? And how yes. would that change your, the way change you look it. at it? You'll everything? make more money from it. Really? I believe so. You'll get an idea. I keep hearing that from other people that are like, you have to go see the world. The founder of Nike got the idea in Japan. He got the shoes in Japan. The founder of Red Bull got the idea in Asia. He wasn't from Asia. The founder of Starbucks got the idea from Italy. More good ideas come from other countries. <laughs> so I'm like, travel. You won't lose it. Now, you could probably travel too much where you lose money, but... Get out, man. Go to Canada. Go to go to London. Go to Europe. Go to Dubai. Go to South Africa. Go to Brazil. Just go on a trip. You know, I've done short trips and they're fine. I've yeah. gone for three days. But, I mean, I recommend generally going seven to ten days. But if you can only do four or five days, do it. When I'm in a plane, write your book while you're in your plane. You need to write a little book on your story. Yeah. When you want, People always go, oh, then I'm wasting time on the plane. No, bring your laptop. Don't watch any movies. Said, I'm going to Australia on Sunday, 15-hour flight. I'm finishing the next section of my book. I got a book called The Three Trends, threetrends.com. I'll do a little advertisement. Um, but I'm, I'm going to write, and then I got a 15-hour flight back. I'm going to write the third section. I set a goal for myself. When I get on the plane, I'm like, Shh, lock myself down, boy. You think you write a book in that within it? Well, I've already written the rough outline, Okay. so I'll just keep working on it. I, I, in 15 more hours, I can probably finish the whole book. Nice. But I won't work. You can't work realistically that hard straight on an airplane. So let's say I work seven hours. Then on the flight home, I'll work seven hours. I'll be done with the book. Nice. I've already put in about 30 hours, 40, oh, yeah. maybe more. I don't know. So. I love it. I love it, Ty. Uh -huh. And um, really quick before we close out, Ty, um, one thing. Who do you want to be remembered as Like when, remember? when you do pass away? like That's a good question. I call that the uh, the tombstone memory. What do you want to be remembered for on your tombstone, your gravestone? I hope it says uh, he was a mad scientist and some of his ideas worked for a lot of people. So I'm an experimenter, you know? I don't have to be right all the time. I'm wrong sometimes. But uh, I'd like to be remembered. My grandpa, one of my grandpas was a mad scientist, so maybe it's in my blood. So sometimes people think I'm crazy. Sometimes people think I'm wrong. But every once in a while, I come up with a good damn idea that helps a lot of people. So I think that's I think I'd also like to be remembered on my gravestone as a loyal friend. Mm. You know, I'm loyal to people, loyal to me. So I think every human should have that on their gravestone. To me, loyalty is to the pe not to everybody. I think some people are loyal to too many people. You can't be loyal to hundreds of people. So how do you... How do you determine that? Who you're loyal to and who you're not? Friends, family, and lo whoever you have kids with, you got to be loyal to them. You know, loyal to your kids, loyal to the people who gave you your kids. So to me, it's a small circle. I mean, I don't think humans can have more than 150 friends and real acquaintances. So they call that Dunbar's number, the tribe number. So I'd like to be remembered as a loyal person to my 150. Some of those are my blood relatives. Some of them will be my kids and grandkids. Some of them will be my close childhood friends. Some of them will be my business partners. I've had 12 business partners. We're all friends. So all those people that have like been through tough stuff with you, that's, you ask me, how do you know? Whoever stuck with you through the hard times. Hmm. And I don't mean just like 
didn't betray you. I'm talking about when things were tough, they actually sent you a text without you asking. There ain't many people like that who say, hey, man, I was thinking of you. How's life? Those people. If you can find those people, because not all your family is loyal to you. You'll never have 100% of your family. You always got a crazy uncle, crazy brother, crazy cousin. But I'm talking about the people who, when nobody believed in you, the people, when other people were betraying you, they still wrote you, hey, man, let's go have lunch. What's going on? Whoever they are, that's my 150. I like on my gravestone that Ty was loyal to his tribe. Nice. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And then you, because you're single right now, right? Yeah. Are you ever going to write a book about all these w beautiful women? You're always <laughs> with? Because let me tell you, since I've known you, that has been the thing to talk about. Like, Ty has some of the most beautiful women, one he's yeah. with around, and yeah. then he's always challenging people where they're from. Yep. Yeah, I like to uh, I like to read. I like I travel the world, so I'm always I do this. Guess your ethnicity. I'd be like five hundred bucks. Guess your ethnicity. Um, I wrote a. I actually built a website. It's called Thirteen Thesis. It's my thirteen theories on dating as a man. I, I can't give advice to women because I'm not I'm not a woman. But uh, so it's called Thirteen Thesis dot com. It's my thirteen theories, my thirteen thesis, and I think. So I lay out like 13 things I've learned. But I think the most important thing is the simplest. It's the it's the first of my theories. This is what I pass on to my son. I pass it on to my daughters too. It's a little more male focused. But the first one is you got to live in a place where a lot of women live that are your type. It's called thick markets. Doesn't mean like she's thick like body. It just okay. means it's an economic term. So for example... I have a friend who came with me to Sweden, okay? It's the most blondes in the world. And it's known for a lot of beautiful people. And he was unhappy there. And I said, why? He said, I like Latinas. So simple answer, bro, move to Mexico, move to Brazil. But there's a lot of people in life. They move to a city. They're like, I'm here for business, but I hate the dating life. Move, because dating's important, because dating's how you find the mother of your child. You know what I mean? And you better pick well the mother of your child. You can date some crazy women, but you better not have a kid with one. And so I think the biggest thing when I'm talking to guys and they don't like their dating life, they need to move. They need to pick up, no matter how painful it is, and move to another country or another city. And it's not just about looks. So I'm not just like, okay, if you like blondes, move to Sweden. If you like brunettes, move. But it's also the whole vibe. For me, um, I seem to get along better with European women. Mm. I think it's because when my dad went to prison when I was a baby, I was raised by my grandma who was born in Germany. Didn't come to America till she was about 21. So I grew up around like a European, how she cooked food, how she picked furniture. I didn't grow up with my Spanish side. My dad's Puerto Rican and, and Spanish from Spain. And um, so my, he was in prison when I was little. So in my formative years, I didn't grow up around my Latin side. It wasn't until I didn't really meet my dad till I was about 12. A little bit, but maybe three or four times I met him. But then around teenager, I started spending time with him. So I think I feel a home because my subconscious remembers my grandma and how I was raised, the food, the music, the lifestyle. So when I go to Europe, I instantly connect better when I'm dating. I've lived in like the South. Like I lived in North Carolina. I went to high school there. I never connected with that culture. So it was hard for me to date. Cause it was like a weird, it was a culture that was foreign to me. Right. It's like very religious, very, and I just was like, ah, oh, I don't. But what happens is in dating, guys start going, something's wrong with me, like I can't find something. No, you might just live in the wrong culture. Change cultures. It's not, it's, so it's looks, but it's also culture. And so I think it's important for a dude, if you, now if you already have a kid and you already got the person, but if you don't have somebody, if you can't move full-time, go spend half the year somewhere else. 
So that's that's the secret. And by the way, you're talking about beautiful women. Some locations of the world have way more beautiful women than others. But Ty, you always have like I don't know if this, but the new yeah. ones, like hot ones, they're <laughs> always every single time. And it's like you're a busy person. You're running all these businesses. You're doing all this and that. Do are is it like? Dating DMs, do they bring them to you? Oh, you like, mean how do I find? Yeah, DMs like, is a good way, like, man. I don't like it's yeah. literally yeah. everywhere. Like, Instagram. Always... I've tried everything. I've done Tinder, like not as much in America. I don't do Tinder. How do you get away with Tinder with your name, dude? I always get. It's funny. I get kicked off Tinder all the time because people report fake accounts. Yeah. So I started putting pictures like where it's like half my face or out, and I put a different. I put my middle name on there. But it does. It happened in America. I get kicked off Tinder, but in Europe, countries that I'm not as well known, yeah, I can do Tinder. But yeah, everywhere you go, look, there's beautiful people everywhere. But I do think um, if you leave, I'll tell you this: women. People always think, "Oh, Ty, you just get women because you have money." But before I had money, I lived an interesting life, and I dated very beautiful women. I was always punching out of my league. Do you think you're? A, do you consider yourself a good-looking guy? I'm all right, but I date women better looking than me. What is it about you that you think they they're attracted about? Adventure. Never. I'm not boring. In what sense? Like conversation. What, conversation. Like? I do. I'm not boring. I'm like I'm traveling. I'm like yo, come with me. I'm this that. They come out with me. We meet people. I have interesting conversation. I think a lot of dudes are boring. Yeah, but prior to that, you're saying that when you were but younger, I was never you boring. didn't have money. Like, I still had. What proof. was it? that I was still like adventurous. So like when I, and I was trying a lot of stuff. So like when I lived in North Carolina, there was a girl, if I, I never put her on, it was before I had social media. She, I'm pretty sure the girl when I, a Brazilian girl that, I, that uh, was around me a lot. She used to live with me when I moved to LA. She would have been the most popular girl I ever put on my social media. She's, I would say she's a top 20 most beautiful natural beauty in the world she's still beautiful she's a top model now um I, you know i once asked her why what what she said when you ty when i met you it was at a club i owned so that helped have a little status but Wait, i wasn't it was your club it was my club okay. but I, I wasn't making much money then i was probably making 10 15 000 a month this i was making money but i wasn't like some billionaire right and i never gave her money it wasn't about, you know, but um, I also, so she, I ignored her the first time she met me. She's like, no guys ever ignored me. I didn't even do it on purpose. I was busy. She always tells the story. She's like, I came up to you and I asked what time the club closes and you turned and looked at me and walked off. I think I was just busy. Sometimes I'm like a mad scientist, so I don't even notice a woman. And I think sometimes when you ignore a woman who's not used to being ignored i think you could do that too much you can ignore a beautiful woman and she'll just never talk to you again but i think it was genuine i wasn't playing games with her and she was like i was so intrigued who this damn dude was because i have no guy ever ignored her <laughs> so maybe that was it i don't know man i don't know my dad was good with women my dad was extra good with women i think a little charisma helps have some up i have a friend he wrote he's one of the most famous pickup artists he said you know have opinions women are interested in men who have opinions even if you turn out to be wrong have some opinions about stuff not too much that you're like aggressive yeah but i always had opinions so you don't get and, and i also tell guys no guy gets all the women so i get rejected Except for you no, I get rejected. I mean, the odds, like from what we see, uh, as opposed uh, to your average yeah, guy. Yeah. Well, I do better than most, but I'm saying you'll never get so good that all women will like you. You could be the richest man in the world, A-list celebrity, rock star, and some woman would not care about you. Right. So you got. I think the other thing is I'm pretty thick-skinned. I think a lot of dudes, they give up because they there was one beautiful girl they liked. They tried to get her out. She ignored them. And that guy got so butt hurt, he never tried again. Me, woman could be like, oh, you're not my type. I'm just like, I've learned how to mentally wall off, move on real fast. Do you recycle? You mean? Like, because I've never seen you recycle. Oh, you mean like, date the same girl no, over? No, I've never seen the same girl in the same oh, video. No, like, is, later on, like, it's always a new girl. Oh, with I don't you. know. Well, remember, I used to have Kate. 
Kate was yeah. my ex. She was on my social. I dated her for a while, on and off for a few years. But it was weird. I had this phase. The only girls I dated, it started with a K. Before her was Kenna. I dated her for like two years. She was an awesome woman. So though, though she was on my timeline a lot. But I'm a social dude. So I always have new friends out. So, it's not, you know, I always have, I like, that's why I said I'm a mad scientist, man. Do you have like, and I'm sure this happens to you. And yeah. You're going to probably agree. Do you have when you have this girl and then she brings her friend and she, they get intrigued with you and they're just like, man. Oh, like, you mean like social yeah, proof? Yeah, like shit. <laughs> I've had it more. <laughs> you know what I've had more often is a girl brings her friend and you're more attracted to her friend. That sucks. So you're out on a date with a girl and she'll be like, yo, you care if my friend comes out? And you're like, Psh. and then you're like, bro, I'm with the wrong girl. That one you got to be careful How with. How do you do that one? Oh, that one's, I've messed it up. I remember do one you time. Over? Nah, it's not, well, you try, but it ain't always easy. I'll never forget. There was a girl. I would say the most depressed in the last 10 years I ever got on missing this girl, on, on missing my chance with a girl. It was, I was probably mad about I wasn't even depressed. I was mad for three months. So there was this girl. It was when I lived in the Hollywood Hills. I was making decent money. I was making seven figures. I had seven figure businesses. I wasn't net. I don't know what I was netting, but plenty of money. And I had that house. It wasn't the baddest ass house, but it was a good house. It was a 6,000 square foot house with the views of all of LA and the hills. And this one girl walked in my house and she was the most shockingly pretty girl. She's a top model visiting. And I tried to get her to go out with me for like six months. I could not get this girl. And then um, I had tickets to a Laker box seat. And I invited her and, like, three other girls that were beautiful and a couple guy friends. But it was only, like, one guy friend could make it. So it was, like, me. And they were all pretty, but this one girl was the prettiest. She's one of the shockers of Los Angeles. Every once in a while, Los Angeles will, there's the most beautiful girl you've ever seen here. So I'm at the Laker game, and it was what you were talking about. The girl who, that beautiful girl never was interested in me for months. She saw the other two girls like me, and she got it totally into me oh, okay shit, right and so like the laker game i got all distracted we were like making out and stuff um and then the other girl was cute too and i tried to talk to both of them and they went to the bathroom and talked about how i had tried to hit on both of them and that girl that i finally had got was like fuck you no, you're such a player you, and and she just left and I was still with the two girls that were pretty, and I was so pissed. So I, I have a friend who was a mentor. He's the best guy on earth with women, okay? Just a natural. And I called, his name's Drago. I remember, he's half Romanian, half Puerto Rican. And I called Drago and I was like, bro, the girl I've liked the most in the last five years, I just lost her. And I, I was like, social proof, she was jealous because of the other girl. Like, I thought I was so smart. <laughs> and he goes, oh no, rule. When there's one girl, that you really actually like. Don't play games. Just focus on her. Even so, if the other girls are like, and, and it was like, I needed a mentor. I should have, you know that uh, that millionaire game where it's like, who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, you can yeah, phone yeah, a friend. Yeah, yeah. When I was in that club, there was too much beauty. It kind of, these were like nines. Nine, guys always say woman's a 10. There ain't many 10. To me, 10 doesn't exist. That's the highest pinnacle. But these were like, saw, one was like a 9.5. And one, the other two were like 8.5. So they're all pretty, pretty. I mean, they're, and so I needed that mentor. He was used to dating the 9.8s. He's like, look, not many people know this because they're not in this situation. It's like, when you finally get the most shockingly, he's like, you better not try to play both of them. So, but you told me, I remember you or you're talking about a story about dating a nine yeah. or a 10, remember? And you were saying that that shit got way like, guys oh, yeah, you had, house. yes. That was the Brazilian girl. If a girl is over 9.5 of physical attractiveness, you were really going to have a tough life as a man. Yeah, I, I had this girl. I used to live on this side of the Hollywood, down on the bottom. When I was on the show Millionaire Matchmaker, and I had this Brazilian girl who lived with me. And I kid you not, every day, she'd go out shopping at Trader Joe's. She'd come home. Five minutes later, always be a knock on my door. Not always, but multiple times. Yeah. I'd go to open the door. It's one of the L.A. Lakers. It's one of the Dodgers. 
I'd recognize the guys, and they'd be like, "Oh, we saw this girl shopping at Trader Joe's, and we followed her That's home." Crazy. And I would be like, "Her name was Priscilla." I'm like, "Yeah, it was. It was no upside. You don't want a 9.8, man. It, it, you know what? If you look at dudes who date 9.8s, everything always goes wrong." If, give, give me a, an example of a 9.8 that somebody would know the name. Well, look at all the celebrities that date Victoria's Secret models. It's all. Yeah. I'm not even going to say because I'm in that industry. Yeah. Think of some famous football players who are date, who are married or were married to famous supermodels. That all ends bad. Yeah. It all ends bad, man. Yeah. So for me, I think that's an example of greed. Guys are too greedy. They're like, uh, there's always a pretty, that in my 13th thesis, the 13th theory that I have is that at some point you got to stop and just settle down because if not, you'll go crazy. You'll be like, ah, it's called optimal stopping. It's a mathematical term. So for me, a 9.8 is just. But when you say stop, like painful. you're not, you're nowhere close to that from what I can see. Well, I mean, stop and have kids. Oh, got it. Okay. You may not be with that same person married forever, but you need to stop. The purpose of dating, love, and sex is to have a kid. Got it. I mean, we evolved. The reason we want to have sex, we think in our conscious mind it's for pleasure, but it's actually to reproduce, and that's the purpose of life on earth. So to me, there are guys that that are forgetting to reproduce. A lot of, And there's women doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. See women, I was like 43, and they're like, I want to have kids. I'm like, well, biology's going to be tough soon. Right, right. You had to stop. They're like, well, I had a guy, but he wasn't quite good enough. Well, the 13th theory in the 13th thesis is at some point you have to just go, this is good enough. You can't always want a little better, a little better, a little better. And so that, for me, that's a lesson I had to learn. When I was at that Lakers game, I had the girl that I wanted, but I was like, oh, I might be able to get both of these women to like me. <laughs> and even Drago was like, bro, you too great. He's like, yeah. in that situation, you got what you wanted. But that's the that's the lesson of the problem with men. We we get a billion dollars and then you're like, oh, this guy has 10 billion. There's guys who make a billion who I know two billionaires. I won't say which two, but you'll know them. Okay, they live in the United States, and they hate each other. And I know exactly why. I made the mistake of bringing the name up of the other guy. They're mm -hmm. both in the same area of. I know one guy. One guy's worth four billion, and the other guy's worth seven. And they get competitive with each other. And I'm thinking, you already won. You already have four billion. How can you be? It, it, nobody's ever gonna meet you if you have four billion and go, oh, you suck. That guy has seven billion. You won, but a man is never satisfied. And so if you can learn to be satisfied at some point, you'd be happy. So where are you at in your love life? I've learned, I've learned to be, be happy. Don't always look for you. I'm a weird one because I'm like kind of in between, but even, I've had to learn that lesson the hard way. Yeah. Do Settle you, down. Do you think... Long, like in the future soon you're you'll you'll get married settle down or or have you because you, you haven't settled down right now right no right. i'm not marriage is a government thing i don't care that much about marriage okay well what about just this one single individual you mean to have kids y yeah Innocent. how do you know i don't have kids well i don't <laughs> but I, i'll talk about that but i do think a man needs to have kids and a woman I'm, i can't speak to women but should have kids don't wait too long if you did have kids would you talk about it would you yeah. Depends who the mom is. Some moms don't want me to talk. Do you have about kids? Her. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> but it, let's just say maybe it's assumed as a yes. You're still out there, right? Like dating and all that. Yeah. By so, I, I think I, I would like put it this way. Um. I'd like still like kids, more kids. Okay. But do you also like the you know the uh, freedom of? Freedom. I'm like I said, I'm more of a free guy. I don't think I'd be that good and just. I mean, you could just look at your. I'm a freedom guy, so the even a woman I date, I do better with a woman who's not super jealous and allows freedom. Okay. 
because I'm traveling the world and stuff like that. There's some women who don't care that much. No, when you say that, yeah. that could go different ways. Freedom as in like, hey, I get it. You got to go run your businesses or freedom. Hey, I can date other people or be with other women. What do you mean? Ideally both. Okay. I mean, it depends because some women are, a lot of women aren't going to like that. Like polyamory guys talk about in general, women don't love the idea. If you're rubbing it in their face, like, oh, here's three other women. I'm in love with you. But you know, there are women who are kind of like hippies and they don't care. They just kind of live their own life if you don't rub it in their face. Got it. Okay. But, I, but you know, I live with the Amish and they have super happy marriages. And sometimes I think maybe that is the right way. I'm not sure I have the answer. These are tough mm. questions, you know, because... Well, these are ones because for me, like, yeah. I think this is what every guy who's ever followed you... Yeah. At least that I've seen on my side. They want to know these questions. Yeah. Listen, right now I'm yeah. asking every man's question that has ever. Yeah, wanted. right actually, now this this shit's gonna go viral. You got you me to talk on it. People have been more. like, <laughs> Ty has all the European girls. Yeah. You never see them with Hispanic girls. It's rarer. And like, I've so, dated some Hispanic. No, you women. have, but yeah. like they're mostly blondes, Europeans. Yeah. You're always challenging all of us to guess what yeah. and <laughs> where they're from and all this, and it's very rare for you to see to see you with the same girls. Same always, girl. And they're yeah. always like. Eight nines, man. Yeah. Always. By the way, the Brazilian girl was very bad. I, I, I'm not, you know, when a woman's beautiful enough, they're all beautiful. Like, I've seen some of the most shockingly pretty African women. Dude, there's a girl that I've talked with on DMs just randomly. She is, she's dark skinned black. Dude, this girl's so shockingly pretty. At some level, the, the ethnicity does not matter anymore. Like there's Asian. I wasn't. I'm. I'm not. You know. Some guys have like an Asian fetish, but probably the girl is the most in love with, and that's not me at all. And I, the most beautiful girl I ever fell in love with was an Asian girl here in L.A. Really? It was right before I became famous on social. Oh man, it, this is an example. It was also at a late Clippers game. I had a friend in town, business partner named Mike. I said. Hey, you want? He was like, I'm in town for three days. He's from North Carolina. I said, let's go to a Clipper game. It was LeBron was still on the Cavs. So it must have been, what is that, 2013? So we go to a Clipper game, and I was dating this girl, but just like we weren't, it was more like friendship. Okay. We had gone on one or two dates. It wasn't really my type. And I said, hey, my friend's in town. Can you bring a friend? She goes, I'll bring my next door neighbor. This is when I had a Maserati. I remember because it could hold four people. Mike was in the car. We drive down. She lived downtown. There's some apartments right by the stadium there, the crypto. Now it's crypto. It used to be Staples Center. Pull up. The girl I know comes out. She's pretty. The girl comes out of the door. And I mean, to this day, like I told you, I'm not even. She was Vietnamese and American. I remember being like, that was the most love and first sight I've ever had. She got in the back of the car. My friend was like, hit. He was like, dude, thanks. She was so pretty. So that whole game, I was pissed. I'm sitting here with a girl. I'm not interested. He's having the time of his life talking to this girl. And he's just sitting there talking to her all smiling. You know what's funny? You ever seen in movies where guys go to the bathroom and punch the wall? Yeah. I always thought that was fake. No joke. I went in the bathroom and punched the wall. No shit. I was like, this isn't right. <laughs> so Mike, I, he came and I said, look, Mike. You're here for one more day. You cannot take this girl. Like, this is my dream. That. I did. I said, I'll find you something. He was like 60. He didn't care. I said, I know another girl. I'll set you up with a, you can go on dates with another girl. And I was like, I want to marry this girl. I was like thinking of marriage. So um, her name was Kim. It was, th it was the day before Thanksgiving or the weekend before because Right after the game, I didn't even talk to her because it was with the girl. I had learned my lesson. Don't try to jump yeah. over. So, But I got her phone number. And the next day, I was at, at the Thanksgiving with my grandma in San Diego. And I texted under the table to Kim. And I said, it's the only time I've ever used this line. It's a little bit cheesy. But I texted her. I said, do you believe in love at first sight? And she wrote, yeah. And I was like, because I am in love with you. And uh, it actually worked. It's crazy. That's such a cheesy line. But what but we, was it about her? We that did. You were so aggressive. She and was. To her? She was beautiful, but smart and super charismatic. She was like, she, you know what? I always say there's five things a man wants in a woman. Okay, and very few women have all five. You want a lover. That's the physical sexual attraction. 
you want the sister. That means somebody who like you have you have the same interests. You want to go to basketball games, like sister energy. You want mother energy. She like takes care of you. If you're like sick, she brings you like chicken noodle soup and all that. You want daughter energy. That means she's she lets you help her sometimes. She's not so self-sufficient. But the most important, she was queen vibes. You could bring Kim to any bit. This is when I was on the rise in business. And I'd bring some women to like business dinners and they'd embarrass me because they were like dumb, pretty, but dumb. This woman had it all, man. She was smart. All my friends, not only do they think she was beautiful, they're like, where'd you meet a girl like that? She was so charismatic and, and, and but interesting. So I could bring her to a dinner of 20 business guys and not even counting how she looked. People were impressed. So that's that queen vibe. A man wants to be like, we've all been out with girls that get drunk and they like make you look stupid. You're, I dated a girl once that I brought to a business dinner and she put, she got so drunk. She pushed four guys in suits in a pool at my Shit. own party. I dated another girl that knocked a guy out with a chokehold at my party. Oh, I broke up with her at that party. Yeah, she got drunk. She was Native American, dude. She was the angriest drunk. And she was strong. And a little dude was at a pool party with me at my house. This is before Kim. And this girl, he said women aren't strong. And she he was kind of drunk too. And she knocked him out. I can't, My friends were like, bro, you got to come outside. You're like, your girlfriend, there's a dude laying here. Oh, and I was so pissed. I was like, what are you doing? And she was so drunk that night. I was like, I'm going to break up with you. And she threw shit at my house at me. So I had been around that. Non That's the opposite of a queen. Embarrassing you. Yeah. She embarrassed me in front of my people, you know. And so when I met Kim, I was like, this girl. We dated on and off for a couple years. To Kim? Did you end up yeah. having a kid with her? No, I didn't have kids. I would have, though. I d we didn't for some but we didn't, but I, I would have. She ended up, we're still friends. So that's what I'm saying. That was right. So what happened to her? Why, why, why didn't it happen? Like, if she was that good. Like I think I, I th people are going to disagree with this, but I, I think there are women that are amazing, but you wouldn't want to have a kid with them. Little She things. had everything that you She wanted. had everything, but over time, first off, I, she wasn't really the mother type. Of a child mm. like I the, my first girlfriend was the perfect girl but she never wanted to have kids to this day she doesn't have kids so I've learned like ask very early in a relationship do you want to have kids because I always say there's two types of women there's STL short-term mating STMs and LTMs and you can meet the perfect girl but she's a STM she's interested in short-term only because if a girl tells me, you know what, I've never really wanted to have kids, I'm not really into it, I'll, then shit, you can't, don't be good. And the worst is when they're beautiful and they tell you that, because then you're just wasting your time, right. unless you're 18 years old. So for we didn't have long-term see eye to eye on what we wanted. Another girl I dated after her, long-term, multiple years, she literally wanted a guy who had a nine to five job. She hated traveling. So sometimes she traveled with me. She got sick of it. She hated attention. She was super shy. So she didn't like that we would. I got to be with a girl that doesn't mind if people come up and talk. So she was so introverted. And she wanted. She literally told me, my dream guy since I was young, we have a white picket fence in the suburbs. We go to church every Sunday. We have a nine to, You have a nine-to-five job. You come at five. You play with the kids. She was describing my nightmare. Her dream was literally she i remember watching her face she was getting all smiling and i'm oh, like shit. this chick's i've been with her for a year i should have asked her this on the first week she's describing my hell as her heaven so you got to ask a girl one time by the way don't do this on the first date because it's too much but like in the first month be like i gotta ask you a question what's heaven on earth for you what's your heaven on earth day look like if she starts describing the opposite of your life, like I like to travel, man. I want to have houses minimum in three places. She hated that. So you can meet the girl of your dreams who has the different, her hell is your heaven, your heaven is her hell. 
and you just got to break it off. But it took you a year to. See I know because I didn't have this damn thirteen thesis dot com book. I wrote that. I'm gonna give that to my sons. You know, people are like, "What are you gonna give your sons? Are you gonna give them wealth?" No, I'm gonna give them this damn book. So there's a lot of criteria you have to check. Now, if you're just looking for short term dating, you don't need any of that. Yeah. But I think a man. I think in the modern world, you have to be careful. You get too distracted by short term mating, and you you, the, you get bad habits, and you just. I see guys. They're dating these chicks. I'm like, bro, this is a sh this is. A I always say there's two kinds of wi women in a man's mind: a mother and a mistress. And sometimes the mistresses are the best looking ones. And there's nothing more dangerous for a man who's looking for long term than to encounter a mistress because men marry their mistress, and that's the worst decision you make of your life. Mm. A mistress girl likes to go to a club all the time. She drinks a lot. She's never thought about marriage. Like, why are you going to try to make her a mother? She doesn't even want to be a mother. You know? So a lot of guys go, I've been victim of this. The more exciting woman, you try to have a long-term relationship. But then a year later, you find out. Like I told you, my first girlfriend literally told me. I didn't believe her. She's like, I don't want to have kids. And I just talked to her recently. And I'm like. Uh, her name is Shara. I said, Shara, how come you have kids? You'd be such a good mom. She goes, you know, Ty told you when we first got married, never want to have kids, and I'm going to stick with it. So I should have never had, we dated for a year or two. I should have just been like, you know what? You're more of a short-term mistress type. And if, if she got offended, then, you, I mean, you don't have to say it in an offensive way. Right, you right. can just say, hey, how about this? We have fun. We'll go on trips every once in a while. But I need to think about long term. So I think a dude in the modern world, Tinder and all this, is you're getting around a lot of short term minded women. And a man really, you don't want to wait too long to reproduce. Men out here, 50 years, nah. Do you consider yourself like a, like a player in a sense? That's a perception. What is a player? I mean... Okay, let's let's Depend put it this uh, different way. phases of my life. I would say yes, but not always. Would you say okay if you weren't famous or or the the success that you have right now, you think you would be married with kids right now? If you're just a regular <laughs> individual, Maybe. you know, when I five. lived at the Amish when I was like 21, I I there's a part of me I was like I'm just gonna get married and have one, you know, one family, and and sometimes it might have been the right move. I can't even say if look, I'll tell you this. If you're a dude and you've always wanted to just have a wife and kids, don't listen to all the stuff on the internet that says you're making a mistake. There's plenty of people that have happy marriages. The key thing is make sure, A, you really are the marriage type. Sometimes guys lie to themselves. Okay? Number two, if you are the marriage type, you better be the best dude at reading people ever. Because if you marry a mistress, you're going to have hell on earth for many years. So I think men aren't trained to differentiate. Now you see it on social media. They're like, oh, this girl's a 304. She's for the streets. That's too simplistic. Right. Obviously, there's women who are just like, yo, I'm on OnlyFans and I'm a, I'm a hooker. I mean, that's obvious she's a mistress. Every guy's going to be able to read that. The tricky ones are the woman who can't read herself. So she says to her, to you, no, no, I really want long term. But if you watch her subconscious or unconscious behaviors, you realize, nah, if a woman really wants to settle down, for example, if you're dating a woman who makes you jealous, assuming you're not a psycho with too jealous, the women I've dated that were true long term material never made me feel jealous ever. They weren't that type. So if you're if you're a normal guy, again, there's guys that are weird with jealousy that get psycho or like if she freaking, you know, goes to the gym, you're jealous. But I'm talking about assuming you're sane. All the girls in hindsight that were worth marrying never made me feel jealous once. And the women who said they wanted long term relationships but did suspect stuff, they didn't know themselves. They should have just said, Ty, I'm more of the mistress type. You want to just have fun for a couple, six months? Let's travel, enjoy life, and then we'll go our separate ways. So the most dangerous 
for a man is a beautiful woman who pretend who doesn't know herself so she's fooled herself and you into thinking she's long term but she's given off behaviors and i think that that's all the men who are unhappy in married marriage married that girl they married that girl man yeah like if you if you marrying a girl that like wants to go to a strip club the day before your marriage like that's important to her don't marry her just have a girlfriend man that's not a long term girl that's a high chance of divorce. I see guy I saw a video where a dude's marrying a chick the night before she's like going crazy and like I wouldn't marry a girl that on her bucket list of things to do is the night before our marriage to go to Vegas to a strip club with dudes. That I'm like, that's that doesn't no hate on her. That's not my type. The women that I think I've been the best long term, it wasn't their thing. I wasn't controlling either. They never asked. So a lot that's the other thing. Guys start controlling women. If you have to control a girl, she's not long term. Because think about it, it's impossible to control even if you're the most controlling guy. She's going to have to go do stuff for the next 10 years that you're married. So when men get in that feeling where like, "Oh man, I got to tell this woman how to dress." I got to I see people giving advice like, you know, no, tell your girl that she can't wear that to the gym. Man, if you got to be telling them stuff and you have to control. Imagine, let's forget dating for a second. Let's talk about business partner. Do you want a business partner that you have to tell to work hard? Do you want a business partner that you have to say, yo, I got a business meeting. I'm going to come to your house to wake you up. No. You want a business partner that meets you there. They're already there. I've had good business partners. You, you, you got a business meeting in New York City. They're like, bro, I already booked my ticket. I'll be there. I got your back. So I see guys getting into this, you know, there's just all this controversy online. It's like you need to make rules for women. No, marry a woman that you don't have to control because she's already interested in long term. But do you have some type of jealousy yourself? Not like, that much because but, uh, I What type of jealousy do you have? Like what is stuff that will make you jealous? It, that will I trigger think, you? I'll tell you this. I think I am a jealous guy, but somehow I got lucky and I learned to, I get those girls out of my life after the first date. But give me an example of, of a girl that would make you jealous if she did something. Oh, dude. I get simple. If you're dating a girl and she's always going out with her girlfriends and she is randomly talking to you or there's a girl and she love bombs you and then she goes three days without writing you and then you're like yo are you still that will make any man jealous right. is that what triggers you i think that triggers any human with emotions but the girls i've dated the longest i never had to ask them hey text me they were always just and they didn't text me too much or too little it yeah. just worked, man. I'm such, if you want a business partner, you find somebody you naturally get along with. If you're in there trying to change them, you suck. And so guys are in here trying to train, change a woman. I'm going to, you ain't changing nobody. If somebody's older than 24 years old, they, you're not changing those things. So that's what I'm saying. Men, you have to become a master. I have on my 12types.com, I have a link to the worldview quiz. You should take that and everybody you date, make sure you have the same worldview. That 12types.com at the top on the nav bar, it has, it's a free test I built called Worldview. That'll change, save you from the worst dating experiences ever. I love that. Because you'll see, that. for example, there's women for sure who are gold diggers in this world. I have been so lucky. Now, I have accidentally dated a few gold diggers. But I've learned how to kind of read it. It's not, and, but I use that quiz. That quiz has a set of questions. Some women just score high gold digger. <laughs> and you can yeah. tell, just never go out with them. Yeah, there was a girl the other day. I met her on Tinder. I was like, yo, take this quiz. She took that quiz. I said, wow, you like money, don't you? She's like, I've always loved money. I was like, how can I slowly unmatch from this girl on Tinder? So I think sometimes use quizzes, but I learned to ask questions. So I'll ask somebody on a date. And this isn't even just with women. When you become make money, you got to ask dudes this. Like, hey, 
why do you hang out with me? <laughs> it's like, you, you'll meet some dudes that are only around you because they want connections. Do you have women that you're just like, man, I just want to go have a good time with her. And it doesn't matter whether she's a gold digger or not or not really. Be careful of that. Don't when you start lowering your standards, yeah. all of a sudden, Charlie Munger used to say, nothing more dangerous for a successful man than a pretty face. A pretty face and a crazy mind. <sighs> no, you have. I've fallen. I've tried that a hundred times, my friend. It never works. No, I, I, I've made that mistake where you're like, you know what? I'm sure this chick is nuts. I never want to have a kid with her. Oh, dude, there was a girl recently that I know is the prettiest. It was funny. In the shower today, before I came here, I was thinking about her because I was like, I haven't texted her in a couple months. Should I text her? She's here in L.A.? No. Oh. No, because I was like, should I be like, yo, you want to come? She, I've never put her on my social, but she is a shockingly, I, sometimes I look at her face, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what did your mom and dad look like? She might have the perfect symmetrical face ever I've ever seen. And I sometimes, um, she's European and I'm like, I was like, I got to see, because she's so pretty that I'm like, your mom and dad have to be a supermodel. She, she's like, but she's super humble. She's like a nine or what? Oh, no more. Her really? face is as close to a 10 that you can get. Yeah, yeah. She's it, but she is certified cray cray. But, um, but do you ever like certified? Do you, are you ever like, damn, she's a 10, but I got to hit that shit because she's a 10? That's what I'm saying. You got to risk. But that's what I mean. She's you, not. A, there's no 10s in my. There's a nine. There, she's maybe like, I'm going to give her a 9.8. It's incredible. Shocking. Beauty. If she came in here, all men's behavior would change. That's how you know men. Men, no matter what, whether they're married, religious, priests, moral people. If she came in there, guys get all a little kooky. It's funny. I watch men around beauty. But, yeah, it's a problem, dude. It's almost like I'm like, nope. I will not text her. And that's what you did in the shower? But no, I was still... thinking about it in the shower. I was like, resist the temptation. Because sometimes I'll remember. That's rare to happen to me. I've, I've, I've gotten strong enough. But that's what I'm just trying to say. No matter what a dude tells you. That women have no effect on them. Bullshit. Unless you are you have no eyeballs. And so resist the temptation. Stay strong. I see that on social guys. is like a hot girl dancing. And then there's the comments are like, stay strong, my, stay, stay strong, my brother. Yeah, there's some women. That's why you have to like, you got to delete their number or something. Because this girl, you there's no way. You would want to have a kid with her. I'm telling you. She got every sign. And I've asked her question. Her mom and dad are crazy. Like certified. No shit. Yeah. And, but, but man, I'm like. Some people ask me, do I believe in God? I'm like, if there's a God, why are you putting that level of beauty on that level of craziness? For God's sake. Literally. Oh, can't you put that on a sane woman? I think I know the reason. If you just do the math, you know. If you look at a population of a million humans, the odds of somebody being in the one percentile of looks and one percentile of good personality are infinitesimally low. So it's like one out of a million or, you know, whatever. So yeah, it pisses me off. That's if funny. I was a god and I could recreate my own world, I would be like, we're not going to do that. We're not going to torture men like that. That's crazy. <laughs> Have you had women also that you've been like, Man, that one got away from me. Yeah, I've had I've had that. I, t I try to not look back. In hindsight, usually the ones that get away from you are like. Because I've had it where there's a girl that I, we broke up. I regretted it. Then a year later, I saw her again. We went out to dinner and I'm like, she did something. I'm like, that's why we broke up. Mm. So in general, they call that like they call that basically what's the phantom memories. That's where you remember a past relationship better than it really was. So you're like, oh, it was so good. Go on a second date with that girl a year later and right away. I've had that. You bring an ex back and right away you're like, I did a trip with one of my exes. Within five minutes of her showing up, I'm like, Shit. Now what did I do that for? <laughs> Come on, trust yourself, man. This girl had the same red flags. So I, and I'm sure they said that about me too. Yeah. So it, you know, it goes two ways. But I, I think you need to.
<laughs> yeah, beauty is a beauty is a strong drug, dude. Beauty is a strong for men. You know, I would say the most powerful forces for men that get us hypnotized. I call it hypnosis, literal hypnosis. That means, see, you can hypnotize the smartest man in the world with only a few things to make him do stupid things. Einstein brain sometimes make one's a beautiful woman. Two is glory and power. Men will do stupid shit if they think glory. So I think men have to be careful of glory, power, and beauty. And I, you could add to that greed with money. It's like every man has their vice, right? So it's like for some people, greed shows up in money. Other people shows up in tequila. They can't stop after two shots. They got to have 12. That's greed gluttony you know beauty some men they can have a beautiful wife you know seven or an eight that's still beautiful they could have it all but they're like no <laughs> there's this mistress is a 9.8 i'm throwing it that that's you gotta you gotta stay strong that's your advice right would you say women beautiful uh -huh. blonde european women <laughs> no because if, if if i think if they did a survey and they're like yeah. all right what's ty's vice yeah. like if It wasn't yours. If we, yeah. if somebody did a, a survey and they were like, "What's Ty's vice? Money, businesses, European blonde women." What it was, <laughs> I myself, I and I think it? the guys over here would vote for that. You would vote for that? No, I say experiences. Really? Novelty. Yeah, maybe I would say, yeah, maybe novelty. You could put that in the same category. But I think I'll that grin think and that, that smile that you I gotta have think right about now, your theory. You look at your. You smile. might be right. I'm gonna think about it. <laughs> Women is up yeah, there. But, uh, but to me, I'm saying that's a universal. I don't think there's any dude that isn't hypnotized by greed, glory, power, or beauty. But there's something that sparkles in your eye and the smile, oh, the, the way you smile. If you look <laughs> you're at, trying to read my personality. This, I'm just saying, you're reading Ty, me. I'm you're just trying saying, to read me. Ty, uh -huh. you have this smile where you're just like, okay, you know what I mean? But... Anyways, Ty, nevertheless, I, 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 I uh, appreciate, you know, yeah. the sit down here. I appreciate going This back a long and time. How long yeah. we go for? Two hours and 14 minutes. I Ooh. love it. I love My it. My assistant here is, is She's in. Heidi, tu esta muy frio. Tienes frio. She got a blanket on waiting for me. <laughs> It's cold and, in this room, man. And Ty, your 12 yeah. types. Yeah. Before we close out, yeah. can you read mine and tell me what yeah, it's about, me see. please? And we'll let me see. From there. Which one did you take? Okay, you got your four. Oh, man, you're ambitious, mofo. You're ambitious. You're made to do a lot. And let's talk about your, your, uh, your this is your test. Yeah, I built this along with some scientists. Uh, but this one I designed. This is the four. If you go to 12types.com and you click on the four motivations. Yeah, so you're very motivated by actual material things. So you need to, you need to get yourself some watches, some jets, some car. You did car. Mm -hmm. Romance is important to you. Having kids and family, you're a six. So you're on material things, you're 76 out of 100. That was high. That's your highest. You're, you're basically very high on all. You're ridiculously high on material things, but you also need to be famous. Mm. You like that fame, that mastery. You got a 72 out of 100, man. Come on. And then you got, yeah, mating is high and freedom. But freedom's not quite as important, which shows up in your life that you don't need to travel. And that's, I think, yes. why I told you. But I, you're fairly high, so I think you're going to be happy when you travel. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I think yeah. you will be happy as a traveler. So, yeah. Material. May, yeah, you, you're, but overall, you're, you're 10 times more ambitious than the average person, I'd say. Okay. So, the good news about that is you're going to accomplish a lot. The bad news about it is you'll have a harder time being happy okay. because you're going to wake up and whatever you get, you want more. There's a, there's a story. I'll, I'll end with this story that I read. John Paul Getty was the first true billionaire. Like he actually had a billion dollars in the bank. And his grandson or granddaughter was kidnapped in Italy, I think. They made a movie about this. And they said, you either give us like I think it was $18 million, dollars, or we're going to start cutting off your only grandson, like, I think, ear, ear or yes. finger. Ear, okay? It used to be my client. They used to be my client. Oh, you know yeah, them. Okay. Daughters. So the ear. And so he wouldn't send the money. 
He had a billion dollars, wouldn't save his only grandkid. And they cut off some of the ear and mailed it to him. And then he said, okay. Anyway, a journalist came during all that and just said to him, he said, you have a billion dollars. How much money is enough? And his answer was more. That's dangerous. That's greed. Kobe Bryant did a, a show, I mean, a commercial with Kanye. And I thought I was, it's, it's a weird commercial because Kobe goes, or Kanye goes, how much is enough? And Kobe goes, more. I don't know if I agree with that part. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with always more. So I'm saying you're going to have, your vice is going to be ambition, actually. So remember, you can turn your vice can also be a superpower. Okay. There's a super fine line. To me, a vice is literally a superpower out of balance. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, for example, I know dudes that are super, they can be strong. They got the body. And part of that is they eat a lot. But if they eat too much, they actually aren't strong anymore. So there's a fine line between your vice and your ambition. And if it gets too out of balance, now it's your weakness. Mm. So for you on that ambition, stay patient enough that you're happy all the way along because you're kind of going to think, I'll be happy when I got a billion, when I'm world famous, when I got the woman, when I, but you know what? It's very rare that you get all those things at the same time. So for you, just be happy where you are now, focus on gratitude, Take some time to chill out. Let your ambition go down. Just 5%. Don't worry. You ain't never, no matter what somebody told you, you'll always be ambitious. It'll come back up in 24 hours. It'll recharge. Take Sundays off. Okay. Good. You know, go. You got kids, right? Yeah, I do. Spend time with the kids. Do something stupid that doesn't make you any money. Go to Disneyland more with them. You'll be good. So you got a superpower. Don't overdo it. I appreciate it, Ty. And thank you so much for your yeah, time man. and everything, teaching me about women, business, <laughs> and uh, my ambition. <laughs> there you go. Thank you guys once again. I appreciate everything. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast yeah, with thanks. Ty Lopez. Until next time. Thank you.